Hey everyone, Andy Weeding here from ON. I hope you're all doing well and looking forward to a Boston Marathon like no other. Let's be honest, this has been a pretty tough year for all of us. Uh, things that we've enjoyed at arm's length suddenly feel miles away. It's difficult to find a sense of normalcy without social gatherings. It's even a struggle to move freely. In running, those two things are often intertwined. The necessary restrictions have made running difficult. However, it's still a great tool to escape 2020. As athletes, you know what challenges are, and you know how to adapt. As part of the celebration, we're here to bring you inspiration and advice to help make this race something special. Here to help with that, three-time Olympian, former American record holder, coach of the newly formed On Athletics Club, Dathan Ritzenheim. Well, you're no stranger to this race, right? So what's your connection to the Boston Marathon? The Boston Marathon is one of the most special races there is, really. I mean, every runner wants to run Boston. Every marathoner, that's like their goal. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do it twice in 2015 and 2019. So I love going back every year. The atmosphere is amazing. And, and I know people are going to be missing it this year, but uh, it's something that they can really they can hopefully do themselves a little bit and then really be, be ready for next year. Like you, you take that one year, still do something for yourself here, and then it's always going to be there, though. And 15 or 19, which one did you prefer? 2015 was a good one. I was a top American. I actually ran really well. 2019 was a struggle, but as most marathoners know, that's what the marathon is. It's sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, and it it can be rough though. Though that last last 10k is is hard no matter what, and even when I ran well in 2015, it was hard. But it's tough along the way, and that was that's part of the journey for this race too. This year's been like a marathon really, and it's had. A lot, of, a lot of downs, a lot of downhills, you know, for sure, but uh, we're past those hard moments, hopefully. You just got to stay in it. That's how you do well in the marathon. You just got to stay in it, even when it's tough. Obviously, with the global pandemic, you're seeing a lot of virtual racing. At ON, we like to highlight a bit of the ways that athletes are adapting to those circumstances. Challenges arise all the time, whether it's on the course or in your daily training. And so you have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to change and and be ready for whatever comes your way. And, and that's something you do in training every day. You, you go out for a run and you don't know if you're gonna feel good or if you're gonna feel bad, or if an injury arises, how are you gonna deal with it? And so you have to surround yourself with good people. But then as the race comes along too, you have to be able to have prepared yourself. And so you, know, you talk through it, you have a lot of mantras, you do positive self-talk, things like that. And it kind of prepares you for when those hard moments come and you can hopefully find that strength to push through. Can you give us an example of a race where you had to overcome some adversity and crazy weather conditions or like a niggle that popped up right before the race? The 2015 Boston Marathon was, was like that. I mean, a lot of people know the weather in Boston can be unpredictable. And even this year, who knows what it's going to be like. It's September. It could be really hot. It could be thunderstorms. But 2015 Boston, for example, was a headwind 20 miles an hour. It was 35 degrees. Nobody wanted to lead, but I thought this will be a good opportunity to put myself right up in the race and I led for most of it all the way up over Heartbreak Hill and so that's one of the things that you just have to be able to know what's going to give you strength at that moment and so if it's a virtual race you know you have to know that those moments are going to come. Think of those things ahead of time and talk yourself through it. I'm almost to the end, uh, just get to my next bottle, whatever it is, have little goals along the way. All right, Dave, then so after 16 years as a professional, you decide to retire. Is that a hard decision? Talk us through it. You know, I had a great long career. 16 years as a professional, I mean, I can't, I can't uh, complain about that at all. But I knew my time was done. I was ready to move on. I was ready to help some other athletes reach their goals. And, and I'm always going to run. It's just I don't get paid to do it anymore. But I, I really love running. I mean, I run every day still. And so um, to be able to have had a long career doing something that I loved, and then be able to go into coaching, helping others run too. It's, a, it's like a dream come true to have been able to do that. So coaching, great, great transition. So you're now the head coach of the OAC or the On Athletics Club. Talk about that transition, adapting to your new role, your new position, what's that like? It's been great actually. We've had a, we've had a great start to our group. We have a, a young team, they're awesome. Most of the kids coming straight out of school, um, but they're all NCAA champions and uh, Pan Am champions. They're, they're great accomplished runners, and so I'm thrilled to be able to work with them, use some of my experience to help them. Um, and it's, it's been fun, but uh, it's been a stressful time too, and so um, we're looking forward to a little bit of fall to rebuild, hopefully reboot, get the team all together. And, and in Boulder, it's a great running city, and so I can't think of a better place to really start our group.
All right, so Dave, it's pretty difficult for coaches to be on site with athletes training at the minute. So do you have any sort of advice how to navigate that coaching remotely? Yeah, coaching is difficult because it's really a, a lot of it is about seeing how the athlete's doing, the communication and matters. And so it's been difficult for a lot of coaches and a lot of runners right now who can't see their coach. So, you know, I've been fortunate we've been able to start doing a little bit of stuff in person, but uh, having some kind of platform is good. I mean, there's a lot of good coaching platforms out there where runners can maybe link their GPS watch and the coach can see what they've been doing. I think that's important because it does give the coach the input, but it also helps you have that connection so that you know that the coach is, is maybe seeing how you're doing. And even if you're not able to communicate as regularly, at least that gives that, that connection because like right now, I mean, a lot of people are feeling disconnected. All right, and so what kind of tips would you give to, to athletes to have to deal with the, the virtual concept? So virtual racing is new to a lot of people, um, but I've had a little bit of success already with having some people just basically treat everything as much like you can as a race. So put your race uniform on. Wake up early if, it's a, if you're gonna do a morning race. If it's, I mean, I've had people do it at night where they spend all day in bed like they would at, for a night race. So try to mimic what you would do for a normal race. So if you're doing the virtual Boston Marathon, I would say get up at 4 a.m. or whatever you were going to get up, just like you were if you were in Hopkinton. I would say put your drinks out at the same intervals or have a, a family member come out and put those drinks for you out there and plan some kind of celebration at the end. I mean, maybe have you, you know, your family, why don't you guys get takeout and have a celebration for the fact that you put in all this training and you actually did this, you know. And so the more that you can make it, normal the better you're going to do and it still might not feel the same as race day but it's going to get the best performance out of you that's great advice we actually asked some of our other athletes about how they adapted their routines to the current landscape so let's take a look um, at the end of the day we have two choices we can choose to let things bring us down or we can choose to make this the reason that we stand taller in February last year, we had Indoor USA Championships and there were a lot of different circumstances where I felt just a little unprepared and I was put in a position where I was just really intimidated and almost can't think of anything because all you can hear is your heartbeat. I had tightened up so much that I caused myself to have an actual injury. For me, the first step was to just be vulnerable and ask people, have you ever gotten anxiety before? And as soon as I got my aha moment, which was let's not put our self-worth on how we do, I really started practicing that. Something that like my mindset has genuinely adapted to is that this is something that you need to put all of your effort into. I did do a lot of guided meditation, visualize my actual head top on, practice everything in my head. A lot of like mental training and mental practice went into it. I love this sport so much. I feel like I improve mentally or physically every single day. So while well, shifting to the racing aspect of things, it's always been kind of, you can focus on your own, like train on your own, kind of get everything geared together on your own, show up to compete. How do you change that focus and that dynamic? Because you kind of need that support system. I think so. I think you need to have a, you always needed to have a team before, but it was always easy. There's, there's people all around. So now it's even more important than ever to find those people that you really, you're really close with, whether it's you know, your coach or training partners or maybe even a family member. If you got to do a long run and you don't have anybody else, maybe you can rope in, you know, your kid or your mom or dad and they can go out and do the long run with you and ride along the side and give you drinks. Because running is really that communal feeling as well. And so, you know, while we're fortunate that, you know, a lot of other things, gyms might be closed and stuff, but right now, for the most part, it's still okay to go out to good areas to run and so but just having someone there to to share that experience is important as well. Racing is the same thing I mean if you have to create your own opportunities through virtual racing or time trials that's important stuff right now just to stay motivated. The marathon this year has been quite difficult to train for with uh, events happening and maybe postponed and then training schedules get adjusted. What kind of advice would you give to people who are kind of dealing with those those mental hurdles? Being flexible is important right now. Uh, I tell that to uh, the runners all the time. We plan to be you know, over in Tokyo right now, but we had to make other 
arrangements. So what we did, some people we said, how long can we train for from the point that we're at right now? So I think everybody has to say, maybe that didn't go ideal, but I can change my goal a little bit. And being a little bit of conservative early on is not a bad thing. And so I always tell that to people in the marathon anyway. Don't go out too fast, right? So this is probably the same if you're competing in a virtual race knowing that you might not have the same nervousness and butterflies, the excitement that gets you out the door for a regular race. So know that going in, don't set yourself the same exact goal. Start a little bit more conservative and catch the fire as things go. Get, get more excited as you say, wow, this is way better than any training run I've been on recently. And so slowly you, you, you build momentum. And so knowing that it wasn't exactly what you wanted from a training standpoint, you can, you can adapt that to the race and just say, I'm going to get the most out of myself today, whether that's my PR or 10 minutes short of my goal. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get the most out of myself today. That's all you can really do. And that's what racing is. If you put your best out there, no matter what the preparation was, you can walk away knowing that you did your best that day. And this kind of takes you back to like setting those, those small goals leading up to the big goals, right? And so if you know, your big goal gets pushed back or comes down or even gets canceled, it's, it's not like all those little goals are negated, right? It's still progress. That's true. I mean, that, and the training is not just for waste either. Even if you felt like you've been training for so long and you didn't get the opportunity that you wanted in April, and now I'm just going to do September based on what's left, that's okay. Because that training doesn't just go away either. After September, that training will carry over to the next year. That's the good thing about running. You can always get better. You're building, you're stacking layers on layers. And so you become better every year. And so you make the most out of this situation here. You do the best you can. And then take all that training, put it to the next year. And put it to the next year. And that's really consistency and building that base is what makes great races. And so just do the best you can in this situation and the next one will be even better. Well, what do you say to people who are going into this race whose training is probably not quite what they wanted? I would say to those people, you're, prob you're not alone. That's everybody right now. And so knowing that is okay. I mean, no one's expecting to go out and, and hit it completely out of the park. Now your training might be okay and it might be good, but you still have to make the most out of where we're at right now, where your training was. And so having goals along the way, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a PR, maybe it's not. You know, just set little goals along the way and start conservatively. And if you feel really good, go a little bit more. But don't start right out thinking, I'm gonna have the best race of my life in a situation where I'm not quite prepared. Go out and try to get the most out of yourself that day. Stack that on top of the next year and the next year and the next year. That's a base foundation that's gonna carry you to 2021 and 2022 and all those other years, this, this marathon training that you've done, even if it hasn't been perfect, that will only make you stronger. So obviously a marathon is very physical and mental. How do you get that boost in a marathon when there's no crowd? You gotta be in it. I mean, you can't fake it once you get to 20 miles. And so practicing the same things that you would practice if you had a regular race is important. So I'm a big fan of mantras. I think positive self-talk, a lot of I can, I am, I'm ready, those kind of things. Those are important. And then having something, even if you need, you know, like a power word or something like that, if you're going and you're like strong, strong, you know, whatever it is, keep going back to that. And eventually it helps push away some of the doubts. It helps you kind of fight through those moments because you have to really, you have to really want it. And sometimes that can be difficult if, if you don't have you know, a half a million people out on a course, you know, yelling at you, that can be difficult. So you're relying on yourself, but really that's, that's what the marathon is. Sometimes you're just racing yourself. You're racing your own, your own doubts, your own demons, things like that. And so if you can, if you can use, you know, positive words or positive mantras to overcome those, I think you can psych yourself up enough to really gut through. Dayton, that's great advice. I, I absolutely believe that a mantra is very necessary when going into like a big race, especially a marathon. Now, let's take a look at uh, some more inspiration from our team on Elite Athletes. Things are always changing and you have to adapt to those changes. And even when things seem to be very hard and you don't really know the future of what's going to happen, stay strong and eventually you will end up making things work. In 1999, I was diagnosed with a bicuspid aortic valve, which is an anomaly in my heart. The doctors had to study my case and 
decide whether or not I was able to do the sport. I was only a, only a young kid. I hadn't won anything yet. So the easy, I guess the easiest was just stay away, just do something else. It was really, really heartbreaking for me. It was like a really tough time. Instead of uh, worrying or feeling sorry of what I can't do, I'll just focus on what I can do, which is get the most out of it. So with some controls, there was no reason why I couldn't do the sport at the highest levels. Eventually, I think it made me stronger, more appreciative of the fact of making it to the start line and just being, being able to race was a was a victory for me. I turned it into something positive. You know, I can win, I can lose, who knows, but I can do what I want. I'm in a better mindset. I stay positive, stay strong, and face the changes as an opportunity. Thanks. Thanks for doing this, Coach Ritz. It's good to no, meet you. No problem. Good to meet you. This, is, this was going to be your first marathon. It right. was, yeah. So I was actually, uh, in, I graduated from business school back in May. Uh, I was in Boston. And so okay. my, my wife actually qualified last summer uh, to run Boston and so did a couple of my friends. And then I was like, man, I should have, you know, tried to do something to get in. And then this opportunity came up. But, you know, unfortunately, things were as they were. But now I've just become uh, a big fan of running. So I, at least I got this out of it. How's everything been the training wise uh, with it being your first one? Um, it's been good. I mean, I feel like this has just been an extended training session, right? I mean, I actually, I started out um, in September. I never really ran longer than five miles before then. Uh, my original goal was to run a sub 18 minute 5K. Uh, I managed to do that um, back in May. Uh, but then, you know, once the marathon stuff started happening, um, I, you know, reoriented my training that way. So I feel like I've been constant training for, you know, for the past, uh, I don't know, nine months at this point. So I'm just excited to be able to let it out. Oh, that's good, man. That's awesome. Well, I would say, I mean, my advice would be, so you, you do the, you do your, your virtual race and set yeah. yourself like a break period, but not like too long, you know, just enough, but start like a set date. So that way you can be like, all right, I'm going to start running this day. As long as everything feels good. Right. You say, yeah. you say I'm starting this day. And then, you know, that way you get back into it, having that little bit of break, but also then kind of setting something on the horizon, is super important. So especially for someone you know, like you said, you didn't really run regularly until just nine months ago, right? Right. So, so you, you, now you've changed and made this a lifestyle, and I think keeping that going is important for you. Absolutely. Coach, I know you're a very experienced marathoner, but do you remember what your first marathon was like? Oh, man. It's very <laughs> hard to forget the first marathon. And I'll okay. tell you, it was one of my worst. <laughs> you know, like uh, a lot of people say the racing doesn't start till 20 miles. 100% true. Yeah, okay. I ran New York City Marathon, and... Uh, I was with the lead pack all the way to 20 miles and I barely made it in. I mean, it was like tunnel vision coming in. And oh, uh, I remember I ate a pizza afterwards and I was completely revived. It was like, uh, just, I was completely out of energy. So I think making sure that you have that, you know, the fuel going in, that's going to be important for sure. With virtual racing too, is that, you know, like on the race day, it's easier when there's like so much excitement. Right. But like, yeah. it's really just you and the road out there on the virtual race. Right. So yeah. It's like you got to want it after that after that 20 mile mark <laughs> so every, everything is going to be telling you to you know to shut down but you know like start using those you know those cues in your brain of you know mental cues like uh, mantras things like that that you have started you know kind of yeah yeah i mean over the course of practice if you look back at all the things you've done that'll give you a lot of confidence too but if you have something to fall back on something positive i think that that will serve you well after 20 miles for sure Awesome. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll be cheering for you. It's inspiring to see you still doing this virtual marathon and, uh, you know, the, the money that you had raised and stuff like that. That's great, too. So I'm, I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to hopefully see you uh, you hit it out of the park on your first one. Keep up the great work out there and uh, looking forward to seeing more big things from OAC. All right. Sounds good, man. Good luck. Hey, Dathan, why is it important now more than ever to remember the reason for why you're running? I think right now there's so many other things, so many other stressors on people's minds. So the one thing we can do is still go out and run every day. Still go out, clear the mind, feel, feel that fitness come back to you. I think it's important to be able to, to have those moments for yourself and do the best that you can do. And we're still fortunate to be able to do that right now. So talking about the virtual races, it's not easy to just walk out the door and run a marathon. And a virtual race is somewhat motivating. Like, how, how is it you can encourage people to get out the door to run a marathon? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta want it. You know, I mean, in a marathon, you just cannot fake it. And so I think if you know that you're not ready to put in the energy for a virtual marathon, 
start a little bit lower. Maybe try a half marathon or a 10K or a 5K. And, you know, even, even just a time trial where you, where you don't have to enter something. But, you know, start with a goal that's less and then build to something. And we do that a lot of times in our, in our training where we have tune-up races, you know. So the end goal might be, it doesn't matter if the end goal is the Boston Marathon or, you know, some small race. Like we have a, something along the way. And I think that that's a great thing for any runner. If you want to run a virtual marathon in the winter, I would have a half marathon that you, or a time trial, something along the way that you can you can put as a benchmark because it's very hard to train for three or four months in marathon training and not have any opportunity between the race day and the start of training to actually you know prove your fitness either. How would you break down a marathon for someone? Well, breaking down a marathon definitely is it's I think it's kind of essential. I mean, you look at 26 miles and when you're at two or three miles, it's just it's daunting to think of, I got to make it this far at that pace. So breaking it into sections is important. For elite runners, it was always nice to have the bottle stations. And I think, you know, everybody else who's out on the course thinks of those drink stations or, you know, if it's Boston, you think of the towns, you think of, you know, you're starting in Hockington, but you, you're thinking about getting to the Newton Hills, you're thinking about getting to Brookline and, and coming over Heartbreak Hill. And those things are little things that people can look forward to in the race. And so, I think it's important to do that, you know, so if you're doing, say, a virtual race, for example, make it, um, I got to get to to town or I got to get to Tom's house or wherever it is. And, and those are places where you can then, okay, this is the next phase of the race. Would you, would you break it down by mileage? It, some people like the, the numbers, you know, if, if, if you like the numbers, you're like, I got to get to 20 and then the race starts. That's the old mantra from, you know, like or the old motto of, of the marathon. The racing doesn't start till 20. And I can tell you from experience, that's pretty much true. The, whatever happens in the first 20 miles, it really doesn't matter. It's the last 10K. And so I think putting, putting that number is important just because anybody knows if I get to 20, I can finish this thing for sure. But if you need something other than numbers, yeah, I think, I think breaking it down to a point, a destination is, is a good thing because it's something physically that you can see and say, once I get past that, like, a lot of runners in Boston, you know, they know that Sitco sign uh, is one mile to go, and you can see it from three miles out, but that's a, a visual cue for them. And so if it's, I gotta get to the bridge, or I gotta get to the river, whatever it is on your virtual race, I think that that's an important thing to do. And in terms of events, how can athletes stay motivated? Staying motivated can be difficult, but I think setting out goals, so whether it's a virtual race, it's a time trial, maybe it's hitting a certain numbers in your metrics of running, you know, I want to run this number of miles per week, or I want to make sure I run this many days in a row. Those are important. Having those goals are important. So whether it's a race or it's daily training, just having a goal is important. So there are a lot of people that sit on the couch and see marathons happening, and I for sure am one of them. What is a small workout someone could do to like just get started? Well, I think one of the best options, especially during a time like this where maybe your regular routes aren't available or the track's not available, do some fart licks. Fart licks are a great, great old school thing where you're just running based on either a time or distance. So like one of my favorites, this is a 34 minute fart lick where you go one minute hard, one minute easy, two minutes hard, two minutes easy, three minutes hard, three minutes easy. And then you work your way back down, go up and down and have that set out. And that way you don't have to be on the track or you don't have to be on your set course. You can do that anywhere. You can do that in a field, you know, you can do that close to your house so you don't have to drive as far. And those are great ways to keep yourself fit have fun in a workout, but really get in a harder effort than just your easy training. All right, well, given the circumstances, what does the future of training look like to you? I think just, you know, worrying about what you can control is important. So it's really not any different. It's just that we have to do the best in the situation that we have. And so, you know, mentally being able to, to know that you can't control every single little thing. So only worrying about the things that you can control are important. But eventually things will get better again. And so doing the best that you can do just for right now, that's all you can ask for. What's something someone can do to kind of navigate the recovery and kind of really make the most of their training? Well, the little things matter in training. You know, like we see your workouts and your long runs and you think those are the special things, but it's all the little stuff, the stretching, the rolling. Um, you know, sometimes it's harder to get massage now. So maybe investing in some recovery tools is, is important right now. So. 
those are the kind of things that people don't want to do. You don't want to do the little, the little hip exercises and the extra stretching or, or maybe even good nutrition. You don't want to do those things because you feel out of your routine, but those things are part of the routine. And so when, you know, the, when you do those along with your training, it makes things feel more normal. So in a time like this where you're like, well, I don't have to go into the office or I'm working from home, still try to keep those little things in the routine because it will make your training better, but it'll also get you into the habits that all of a sudden it's not three, four months later and you're like, I haven't done any core work, you know, something like that. And so I think it's important to stay on those things all the time, but that's why when you have that break, take the break, but then you're recharged to come back and do all those little things that matter. What advice would you give to these marathoners who are about to you know, embark on this virtual challenge? So the nutrition is going to be important, right? Because in the race, you have that out on the course. Well, now you don't. So you have to prepare that yourself. Now, the one good thing is you don't have to just take what they have out there. You could make your own drinks or whatever you want that works. Take that to your, to, on, on your trip. So if it's every 5K or every three miles, two miles, whatever it is, you get to pick whatever you want out there. But try it in your practice before you do it. Just like we always say, don't try anything on race day. Try it in one of your training sessions beforehand, and then that way you don't get to 20 miles and can't finish or something. So, Dathan, how, how would you say your diet has changed you know, as your life has kind of changed itself? Yeah, well, with as I became a, uh, a coach instead of a professional runner, I got out of some of the routines and the habits that we had talked about before, you know, like staying on all the little things matters. And, and I need to go back. I need to, I need to get back on that stuff for sure because what you put into your body is what fuel you get in, in training and racing. And, and I can tell my training volume is less now that I'm not a professional runner anymore, but I can definitely tell a difference in the way I feel. And so... But when you're training a lot, you got to make sure you're getting enough fuel. You got to make sure you're getting good fuel. So, um, getting you know whole foods and um, things that aren't processed. A lot of good lean proteins and fruits and vegetables. That's all very important in your daily training. But making sure you have enough carbohydrates for doing marathon training. I mean, that's very important for a lot of people who go out maybe on a Sunday long run and. It could be they get up to 20 miles in some training plans. Well, you got to be able to recover from that, probably go to work the next week. Maybe you have a family. So if you can set out time before in the week and prepare some stuff, that's important. And so that's one of the things that I always found very helpful is I plan out a couple days. And then that way I know that if I have a big workout coming up, I don't have to worry about spending an hour preparing a healthy meal. So I'll have to go back to that now that I'm I'm not training as much and putting as much emphasis on the little things anymore. You've run Chicago, New York, Boston, London, Olympics. After all these major endeavors, where's the one place you go when you're done racing? Oh, I always wanted the big juicy burger afterwards. I mean, I, I was so sick of eating carbs and drinking sugary drinks and all that stuff. So I just wanted like this big juicy salty burger afterwards. So you would recommend a big burger after? Big, big burger will bring you back to life after the marathon. Hey, on a personal note, how, how are you doing through all this global pandemic and all that? Like everybody else that's had his challenges, but I'm an eternal optimist. And so I've, I've tried to really look at the positive and, you know, I've been able to start coaching a great group, work with a great company, live in a cool place. And so I'm really just trying to make the most out of those like everybody else and focus on the good and try not to worry so much about the bad. The Olympic trials in February uh, and you retired, head coach, you had successful athletes. I'd, I'd say 2020 isn't too bad for you. You know, 2020 has, it started rough and it's ending good. Any final words of wisdom or advice for those running the 2020 virtual Boston Marathon? I say just make the most out of the day, seize the day. That's all you need to do. Get the most out of yourself, go on, celebrate, and then let's get ready for the next year.